Hi guys, um, my name's Gary, and I've sort of felt that throughout tonight a lot of the talks have been about things that have been sort of frivolous <laughs> and not important, so I've decided to use my platform and my voice to talk about something that really matters, <laughs> which is a woman who I won't name yet, <laughs> who has had a profound impact on the, the how I live my life on a day-to-day -day basis, and her name is Paris Hilton. <laughs> so I'm going to start, oh, I should actually um, disclose before I begin that uh, about two nights ago I came home from a night out so drunk and I was like, oh my god, I was supposed to have these slides done like 48 hours ago. So I began them in my drunken state. So the first four <laughs> slides of this presentation will probably be cohesive to my current state, but from then on there might be a distinct difference, <laughs> but we'll convince. So I'm going to do some background on myself and on Paris which, drunkenly, I decided to do numerically. <laughs> so we'll start with the woman herself, Paris Hilton. <clears throat> 18 is the position of which her groundbreaking single, Stars of Blind, reached <laughs> on the Billboard Hot 2100. <clears throat> A fantastic song. If you haven't heard it, I couldn't suggest more that you look it up. 2005 is the year in which she was the most Googled item, more than porn, more than cancer, more than gay porn. <laughs> she was Googled. <laughs> 300,000 is how many dollars Paris was paid to appear in a nightclub for 25 minutes at the peak of her existence between the years of 2005 and 2007. <clears throat> and roughly how much I'm being paid to be here tonight. <laughs> $2.5 billion is how many dollars Paris has generated in revenue from her perfumes, of which there is 21. <laughs> Moving on to background on me. That's me <laughs> holding a microphone, which I usually am. <laughs> oh, that's my Twitter handle. <laughs> As I said, I was pretty drunk when I made these, but if you do find me endearing at all, you can catch more of this on, on Twitter. <laughs> Two, number of cats Gary had age 10, named Paris and Nicole. <laughs> Nicole died a brutal death three weeks after I acquired her. She froze to death in the Great Freeze of 2006 and was found... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Paris lived on for a year and a half and then ran away suspiciously. <laughs> 29, number of people that have deleted me on Facebook in the last two years, approximately. Research into this figure is ongoing and has thus far been inconclusive, but if you have any ideas as to why this figure came to be after this talk, don't bother telling me, because I don't really care. <laughs> 49.99, how many euro Gary made his dad, when I was 10, um, pay for a Paris Hilton fragrance as part of his mom's Christmas present in the year 2006? So that I could keep the bottle when she was done, which she's still not. <laughs> she still hasn't finished that. <laughs> oh, how did that get in there? 600,000 is how many units Paris sold of her debut album, Paris. <laughs> okay, so um, every story has like a, not every good story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. So I want to talk you through the beginning of our protagonist Paris' story. And I think that the Paris Hilton story really is all about being in the right place at the right time. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of background. Year like 2000, Paris, being a Hilton, could obviously, could obviously do whatever she wanted as a career, so she decided that she wanted to be a model. And so she signed to a little-known modeling agency called T Model Management. That T stands for Trump, because the Trumps and the Hiltons are very good family friends. A piece of trivia you don't hear coming out of Paris is now too often lately. <laughs> Um, but she got more attention for, from her modeling than she did. 
she got more attention for her partying than she did for her modeling, um, as she became known as the leading New York it girl. And the culmination of this was when she had a five-parter 21st, five different parties in five different cities across five nights, which is a model I'm working on for my own upcoming 21st birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but the, what really brought Paris to, what was the kick, probably the most important week of Paris's life and her career would be the week that her first movie came out. <laughs> Aptly titled One Night in Paris, which was a sex tape filmed when she was 19 years old um, with Rick Solomon, formerly uh, going out with Pamela Anderson. And this uh, was leaked and it was a very traumatic time in Paris's life for obvious reasons, but there was quite a lot of uh, skepticism around the release of it because it did coincide with the, re the first episode of her new reality show, The Simple Life. Some of you might be familiar with this show. It's uh, pretty heavy stuff. <laughs> um, it was basically, it's where Paris plays the part of a civilian and she doesn't do civilian tasks with her best friend Although it was, it was originally supposed to be with her sister, Nikki, um, but Nikki was not interested in the same type of thing. So then it was going to be uh, Rod Stewart's daughter, Kimberly Stewart. But she, the producers didn't feel as though she was famous enough. And then it was going to be with Casey Johnson, who, da who her dad created Band-Aids, like plasters in America. <laughs> but the producers decided that she wasn't pretty enough. And eventually it was with her best friend and absolute first choice, <laughs> Nicole Ritchie. <laughs> who wasn't pretty or famous, but had a very visible heroin addiction. <laughs> and the show was an absolute hit. Um, subsequent to this, Paris's empire went from zero to 100 in the space of about 12 months. And um, it culminated in the release of a book that had a very, very big impact on my life. <laughs> Confessions of an heiress, a tongue in cheek, peek behind the pose, which is also the name of this talk. <laughs> in the book, it's sort of, it's an autobiography, but it's also a self-help book. So it teaches you things like how to pack like an heiress, uh, just never wear the same outfit twice, and things like how to act in social situations when our number one tip is, an heiress is nice to everyone, except the girl that steals your boyfriend, <laughs> which I think is true. <laughs> So, as you can probably tell by now, Paris is doing, like, pretty well for herself. But I want to give people who don't know some context to just the magnitude of where she came to be with this slide. The heiress empire. <laughs> so, part of the empire, well, the, the most important part is her perfume line, which um, started with her debut perfume, heiress, which by the end of 2005 had generated $11 million in revenue. And by, the, by today, she has generated, as we already know, $2.5 billion. Also part of the empire is stores. There are currently, as of today, 50 Paris Hilton stores in 40 different contracts which stock only Paris Hilton products, of which there are 17 lines, including hair extensions, hair care products, skin care, perfumes, books, bags, purses. I mean, I don't know the rest, but I'm sure you guys do. <laughs> Television. The Simple Life, obviously massive success, debuted to 13.3 million viewers, which increased Fox's adult 18 to 49 demographic rating by 79%, which is like a lot. <laughs> Property. Paris currently is in charge of one Paris Hilton Beach Resort in the Philippines, everyone's favorite country. <laughs> and there's another one also in the Philippines, currently in, con in construction. And there's also five Paris Hilton nightclubs and books. She is currently the author, ghostwriter, of two New York Times best-selling books, and also her fucking dog, Tinkerbell, has a book, which I own two copies of, because one got wet. <laughs> um, and to say that it's a page turner would be not true, but I loved it. I, um, also, she's dead, so R.I.P. Can we have a moment of silence, please? Okay. <laughs> So, I went a slide too early, but anyway, basically, what goes up must come down. And around the 2005, six mark things, you could say there was a noticeable shift in public opinion of, for Paris. 
um, a couple of noticeable incidents that sort of might have predicted what was to come. Um, she starred in House of Wax, which was a remake of a very famous cult horror film, which went on to gross $70 million in box office, which is pretty respectable, but the leading part of the marketing campaign was this uh, like guerrilla marketing posters all over Los Angeles that said, see Paris die. Because she dies in the film quite brutally. I can't really watch it myself, but <laughs> it's, it's meant to be quite gruesome. Um, and so, as you can imagine, that would be quite traumatic to drive around your hometown and see posters promoting your own fake death. Also this time, her debut album, Paris, stunning piece of work, <laughs> was released. Um, and in the United Kingdom, um, Banksy, the graffiti artist, which you might be familiar with, he did this campaign where he produced basically an alternative version to her album and went, had a team around different stores all around the UK place his alternative version of the album in front of her album, but with the same cover and barcode, so fans would unwittingly buy his album, which in the inlay, her head was replaced with dogs, and it had a sticker that said, featuring the hit singles, why am I famous, what have I done? <laughs> if Banksy was here right now, I would ref like revert to the previous slide there as Empire to explain exactly what, but he's not. <laughs> Um, other bad things happened, but in my opinion, as an expert, there's two specific <laughs> um, pinpoints as to where it all went horribly wrong for the protagonist of our story, Paris. The first of which was the 2007 arrest. This was a really dark time for Paris and her fans. A lot of people think that Paris was arrested for driving under the influence, but actually she was arrested because she had um, a suspended license and she signed an agreement to not drive anymore. And then like three days later, she drove again, 70 miles per hour in a 45 zone. <laughs> Which I just think is so funny because you can imagine her being like, yeah, I'm not gonna drive. And then being like, okay, I'll just drive us all home. <laughs> <laughs> so she gets pulled over and arrested. And then in my opinion, completely made an example of like, she got, she literally drove without a license and she got sentenced to 45 days in jail. Um, which was like sad. And, um, but in true Paris form, obviously the day before she had to surrender, the day before any of us would have to surrender, you'd obviously spend it, I think, you know, reflecting on your life, what decisions led you to come to here, really having a slice of humble, humble pie. Paris went to the fucking VMAs. <laughs> she went to the VMAs. She got her hair done and surrendered a day early so that her fucking mugshot is the same hairstyle and makeup that she got professionally done for the VMAs. <laughs> uh, long story short, went into jail, came out a day later for a medical addition and was put in house arrest. Then everyone was like, that's not gonna happen. Back in jail. There's all these famous photos of her bawling her eyes out in a, the back of a police car, shouting for her mom. It was really sad. And that was sort of like the first, ex the first like major example of how things were turning sour for Paris. And the, fir the other like exhibit B of the demise of Paris Hilton is this bitch. <laughs> this item in front of me, some of you might know as Kimberly Ann Kardashian. Her middle name's not Ann, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so some of you might know, but some of you might not, that Kim Kardashian first came to fame because she was Paris Hilton's personal assistant and stylist. And she first became photographed because Paris had, um, she had stopped being friends with Nicole Richie, um, supposedly because Nicole held a birthday party for Paris and then at the birthday party aired her sex tape. Kind of gas. <laughs> Um, and anyway, so Nicole was out, Kim was in, and she, she was constantly on Paris's arm, so she's been photographed. And then, as I stated at the start of this talk, Paris has laid the blueprint for the modern celebrity. And so, true to Paris form, she releases a sex tape, she gets a reality show, boom. Literally, there's this documentary called Famous Being Famous, which you can watch, and if anyone wants to do further reading on this subject, which you obviously do, 
um, you can watch. And it's, if you want to watch it, follow the Twitter account, Party Like It's 2007. <laughs> and there's a link in the bio. And it just talks about how, how Paris's fame falls at the precise same time Kim's rises. And you can actually see it like as the years goes by. All of Kim's first interviews are like, oh, so you're friends with Paris Hilton. Like, what's that like? And as, like, as that goes up, all of Paris Hilton's, Hilton's, Paris Hilton's interviews are like, oh, you're friends with Kim Kardashian. Like, what's she really like? It's really sad. Today, Kim has 42.7 <laughs> million followers on Twitter and Paris is like 13.3-ish. I know, I'm so upset about it. <laughs> um, but anyway, so our story has reached a pretty dark point. Um, and obviously as someone, I, I'm telling you this now, but I lived through this shit. Like I was like 11 years old, bawling my fucking eyes out, like reading her book again and again and again. So basically I know how you're feeling, which is probably something like this. <laughs> okay, but fear not, because I know that you're probably like, oh my God, Paris is over. It's basically like stories ended for her. Well, you're wrong, because <laughs> this is how many magazine covers Paris has been on in the last nine months alone, in 2016, which is 17. <laughs> Woo! Yes, love her, loves it. Um, <laughs> she looks so good on all of these, and she's still really famous. Okay? <laughs> but if that wasn't enough, I've provided a short slide which provides a few reasons why you should not feel sorry at all for Paris Hilton in 2016. <laughs> Her estimated net worth is still $100 million, which is like loads of money. And also everyone thinks that she has loads of money from her parents, but actually they're giving it all to charity and she never saw a dime from them. <laughs> She's within the top five highest paid DJs in the world per rate per show. This was something she said and she got a lot of negative press for it because Tiesta was like, I definitely make more money than Paris Hilton, which is true. But per show, she, her, like, it, it costs more for you to rent Paris for a night than it does to rent, like, moderat or like someone not that like not tiesto but like loads of famous djs she makes between like 100 to 300 grand per hour of a set over the next two years she's expected to open over 200 cosmetic stores in china uh, kylie jenner could never <laughs> 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 She will go down in history as the poster girl, epitome icon of famous for being famous. She has led the pack of Tara Reeds and Nicole Richie's and Lindsay Lohan's all over the world. And fucking hell, I would die happy if that was me. <laughs> and the last point as to why you should not feel sorry for Paris Hilton in 2006 is, she's funny and she's pretty. <laughs> And she's rich, if you didn't gather from all of these. <laughs> Which I think is really cool. Also, she has a quote in the Oxford Dictionary of Quotes, which is, always dress, crude, always dress cute and never be boring. Life's too short to blend in. Which I think is good advice. Speaking of advice, I wanna end this talk with a crucial quote that has impacted my life and I think could change all of yours if you just listen for a minute. <laughs> and that quote is, live every day like it's your birthday, because that's my favorite day of the year. So if every day was that day, you'd, you'd always be having a good time. And you're probably wondering who said that. <laughs> and I'm about to tell you, it was fucking Paris Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> And also, me, a second ago, and you can find me on Twitter at Gary underscore is underscore hip. Thank you. Get up for Gary Grimes. <laughs>